Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Fleming. I'm here to welcome you to Masters of the Year, the nine-part Apple TV Plus series. Now, the focus is the bloody 100th, a battalion of pilots barely out of their teens who took the war to Hitler's doorstep with death-defying bombing runs that allowed the Allies to destroy German munitions factories, railroad supplies lines, and basically made the D-Day invasion of Normandy possible by battering the German Luftwaffe to become, well, masters of the air. Now, for Gary Getzman, Tom Hanks, and Steven Spielberg, this is the third World War II miniseries after the groundbreaking Band of Brothers in the Pacific. Those launched many star careers and won 14 Emmys between them. Masters of the Air is poised to do similarly well, similarly well as the cast is already taking off. Here to discuss the painstaking three-year process of bringing the men in the battles they fought back to life are executive producer Gary Getzman, who partners with Tom Hanks and Playtone, and aside from the, these World War II epics, has produced the Mamma Mia films, Charlie Wilson's War, Man Called Otto, The Polar Express, That Thing You Do, Philadelphia, and many others. <laughs> Gary had a top team around him, and joining us is Jack Fitzgerald, the director of photography, whose work includes True Detective, and Blake Neely, whose uh, work as a composer and conductor, keep rolling, uh, includes Greyhound, The Bourne Legacy, and Michael Clayton, and Jack Whitaker, the supervising sound editor, whose work includes Pirates of the Caribbean's Dead Men Tell No Tales, Shang-Chi, and Coco. Please welcome our panelists. Thank you all for coming. Um, yeah, why don't... Okay. So... <laughs> so we pulled everybody away from their TVs, um, and the masters in Augusta. And so let's start this off by showing the real masters and some of the stuff, incredible stuff that they did back in World War II. Roll that clip, Larry. Why didn't you tell me? What? You'd been up. Two missions. You didn't tell me it was like that. I don't know what to say. You've seen it now. I don't know what I saw. Thirty guys. Just... Should have been up there with you. We didn't see it there, but they blow a lot of shit up, too. Um, so um, I remember um, when Tom Cruise did Top Gun Maverick, he had to set up this boot camp because in the first film, he was the only actor who, who, who when he went up in one of those jets, 
tried then tried to say his line and and they all vomited they had to so they he had to he did it a different way in Top Gun Maverick to make it possible but it sounds like what you guys did and I watched it and these pirate and these pilots are flying and there's there's bombs coming from below and there's these fighters trying to take them out of the sky and it just is, looks so convincing but it sounds like it was shot in, much, in a much different way. Now, now, Jack, as as our DP, I want to ask you: What would you say, from your vantage point, was the biggest challenge in doing all this and getting it on screen and making it look realistic? Um, yeah, it was a huge challenge, obviously, to have our actors um, believe that they were flying planes and therefore believe, get the audience to believe they were really flying the planes. Um, we did it on volume stage, so we had uh, the advantage of having eye lines working for, we had planes streaking past us and explosions happening all around the actors when they were in the, in the plane. Um, and that was extremely helpful for us as creatives around them and also for them. Um, the authenticity which was needed to, to make the worldwide audience, CGI is so sophisticated these days, but to see battle work like that felt kind of like new and, and what, what was possible to, what we could achieve was had kind of come into sync. Well now, I have two jacks up here, which means I have a good hand. So I want to ask my ah. second jack, um, you know, who was responsible for the sound that you hear, what about you? What was your biggest challenge in when you looked over this whole thing and just creating this magnificent, and it's beautiful, you watch these bombs fall and it's just like, wow. For you, what's the biggest challenge of, 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 of making it sound right? Well, for the sound, I th would say that the biggest challenge was conveying the authenticity of the time and also making the thing feel dramatic to the audience on the small screen, and this is a streaming project, so we wanted to make this thing as big as possible for the small screen, um, and really sell that drama and emotion and really do justice to the story of these people went through. It's a, it's a big undertaking, and we felt a, a big responsibility for that. Well now, now Blake, so you did the music, and this was the equivalent of four feature films, and cut into nine parts. Does that make it easier or harder, and how do you, how do you score something like this and pace yourself? Because it's a, the music just pulls you in, and you feel, you feel sad, you feel exhilarated, you feel fear, you feel so many things, Give us an idea of your challenge. Well, my challenge is, is really just to try to get it right tone-wise because music can, it, it's magical how it can change a scene. Um, and a lot of the, there's a lot of scenes where I'm scoring guys covering their faces. So we would have lots of talks about what do we want to plot this. We never wanted to do horror. Um, and there's a scene that there, uh, Clevin's looking out over all this carnage in the sky, and I, I just thought we should play tragedy. You know, not even just so much sad or horrific, it's just tragic. So lots of talks like that, and you know, these, these boys just wanted to go home. So there's always this pullback uh, emotionally to send them home, get this job done. But also, the other challenge was to do it differently than we did on Pacific, because while that felt more just sort of slogging uh, trudging through the mud. This was more a heroic one for me to score. Hmm. Well now, and Gary, this started for you on Band of Brothers many years ago. Um, these must just be a bear to pull off. Um, why did you, Tom, and Steven Spielberg have to tell this one? Well, we, we had an obligation to Steven's father. Um, uh, he was in the Army Air Force. He'd see band in the Pacific and always say to Stephen, you know, those are great. When are you going to do the pilots? When are you going to do Europe and the flying uh, war up there? 
And it kind of got in our heads that if we ever did another one, that would be it. And then Don Miller's book came along, Masters of the Air, that made it so, I guess this is kind of our template. We tried every way we could not to do it because they're such bears to yeah. tackle in a lot of years of uh, making them. Um, but we, uh, we caved. And we went straight into COVID while making it, so it was really great timing. You know. Yeah, we did another panel, and I think you told me that the that was about sixty million dollars in COVID costs uh, because you were right smack in the. Uh, that's you know, true. Yeah. That's that's just uh, that's amazing. Now, you, if you consider where you were with Band of Brothers and even the Pacific, technology has improved. There there's an ability to do a lot more things, maybe more efficiently. What would you say? was the biggest thing that you were able to do here that maybe you couldn't back then because it just, you're using the cutting edge, you're using the cutting edge of things back then, but they're so much different now. Well, you kind of said it. The, uh, the technology rose to the point where we could um, do the kind of uh, air material that we did in this, and we couldn't have done it uh, during Band of Brothers time or Pacific and to the magnitude that we were able to do it now. Steven Rosenbaum, our visual effects supervisor, was amazing. Dean Egg, amazing. We really had uh, great people on that. Well, you know, um, I went back and I watched the first two um, series, and I'm and I'm like, oh yeah, Damian Lewis. I forgot he was in it. Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy. Um, Rami Malek, uh, you know, Tom Hardy, and you go, wow, this is such a springboard for the next generation of talent. And you got some great guys here whose careers are already taking off. All of you, if you can, just give us a sense, because when you cast out Austin Butler, he was working with Tom on Elvis, and we had only really seen him in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Give us a sense of, of who's already popped and, and why this is such a great springboard showcase for a young actor and actress. Well, I'm, I mean, hopefully it's because we hire talented actors who probably are gonna have the fates they're gonna have in our business anyway. Um, Austin had not started filming with Tom yet. They were kind of, remember when Tom and Rita were the poster people for COVID back then, <laughs> and it was all during that time. And he was in uh, Lucy Bevins's, who's our fantastic casting director. If you ever get a chance to work with Lucy Bevin, fantastic. Anyway, she, um, th she had groupings pretty much for every part, how she saw them. Of course, a lot of jigsaw puzzling went around and identifying the guys. There are 325 speaking parts. Wow. But there were like 10 that were really kind of uh, key to who we got and how we did it. We were lucky enough to get Callum Turner, who is brilliant and, uh, and a brilliant guy. If you have a chance to go to dinner with him, he's amazing. Um, and, uh, and yeah. of course, Nate Mann and uh, Anthony Boyle and, yeah, great guys. Well, you know, and so, um, and so you mentioned some of these guys and, and, and Nate played uh, Rosie Rosenthal, who flew twice as many missions as he had to and became a prosecutor at Nuremberg and Barry Keoghan and we have, um, you know, and we have Anthony Boyle who plays this navigator who is battling air sickness in the early part of his uh, uh, run. Uh, for each of you, which character did you latch on to? And I'm talking about not just the actor, but the actual character that they played because these guys, I don't know, you watch this and you say, could I have done that in, in this day and age especially? Would I be willing to do that? Well, that's a very, very good point. Would we be willing to do that? Um, it is difficult for me because I'm a fan of all of the actors actually, and all of the characters. Uh, Rosie was very special, he's a, an amazing man, was an amazing man, and uh, we really connected with his story and I loved working on on his storyline for sure. It, through five and episode nine, it's, it's fantastic. Mm. And how about you, Jack? Um, I feel like a, for my episodes are really connected with Callum Turner, um, the Egan character. Um, he, 
I wasn't, I'd seen him in Green Room, uh, Green Room before, so I had a little inkling, but he was transformed into a completely different person, obviously, for this character. Um, I've always been a huge fan of Barry Keogh, but and I was sad to s the first time I met him because he wasn't so much part of my episodes. However, I did um, shoot his death, and I was like, yeah. "Hi, Barry, nice to meet you. We're actually going to kill you today." <laughs> 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 what is that like? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, awkward. <laughs> yeah, Barry is a shot of life, isn't he? We had him for our, another panel that we did with the cast, and he is, uh, you know, he 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 made the most of his three episodes. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, you know, and, and Blake, how about you? What was the character that, you know, even even reading up, and you, I, we haven't even really talked about the, the, the Red Tails, the Tuskegee Airmen, who um, intermingled with these guys in that they ended up, some of them, a spoiler alert, you know, in a POW camp. But give us an idea of the ones that sparked you. Well, this is not a dodge, but I don't have a favorite character. I loved all of them, and um, I didn't, write character themes for this. Um, it was all, there's the brotherhood theme, there's the home theme, there's the emotional. Uh, I do have some scenes that were my favorite, and probably the hardest scene I've ever done was the uh, Rosie discovering the concentration camp. Um, and he was in a, Rosie was in a, a lot of scenes that were tough to score, but then Barry's death, um, Crosby throwing up, you know, what do you do with that musically? But. <laughs> But I, I just, I just loved all well, of them. You go into it with great expectations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How about you, Gary? Oh, favorites, I have no favorites. I love all my boys, and uh, I, you know, we have you know, three fabulous female performances in this thing that I'd be remiss, you know, if we didn't mention how great they were in coming into our aquarium of testosterone and uh, yeah. and really <laughs> taking Mention their place em. in a beautiful way. What? Mention them. Our pal Isabel May. Oh my God, we love Isabel May, of course. And we love Belle. Yeah. Polly, who you probably all know. Um, and, um, oh my God, don't do this. Our Polish superstar. Yes, I... Uh, well, I'll fact check. She that starred in later. Cold War, anyway. Brilliant. Yes. Help. Of course. Yes. <laughs> I feel. I feel uh, so horrible. They're they're it's wonderful. Early. She's great. Anyway, yeah, yeah. But you know, you you um, Blake brought up the concentration camp scene, and Jack, what was when you have to shoot something like that? The way it comes off, it kind of sneaks up on you. Don't you don't really. You're aware that they're like, what is that smell? And then suddenly, it, it's just done so gracefully and tastefully. When you're in there trying to figure that out, what is the challenge and, you know? I just need to stop you there because I didn't shoot that scene. Oh, you did? But I did shoot the scene where Egan uh, and the boys are getting on the train and the, the train is, carriage is going past and we see all the hands of the woman and the children, which makes me want to cry right now. But um, yeah, because that was, to have that image of the ghost, and we called it the ghost train because it came out of the oh. steam and we saw you know, these people who were knowing what their fate was and knowing that there were these two sides to that moment and the boys couldn't help in that moment, it was... You did a brilliant job with that. It was great, Jack. And, and Gary, you were there uh, for the concentration camp scene. Give us a sense as to what that was like, because I, I, it haunted me for days. Yeah, it's a little different for us. Um, we're more in the how do we do this and make it impactful and represent what it's supposed to represent. Um, most of those people... Um, are people who are uh, really talented at moving their arms and legs around, whether from ballet or from, uh, you know, like uh, a troupe or something. And, you know, it's, it's just tough. You know, you're worrying more about those people in that situation. It's cold. Um, so it's, it's not so much caring an eye to the impact, but then you got to do it. 
but then you're in that room and you're watching it with all your accomplished editors and everybody else, and you see what, you see what you've captured while you were worried about all the people, what's the feeling then when you watch it and you see the enormity of it? There's nothing better when all the pieces from all the brilliant artisans we have comes together in that room and, uh, and then this guy, you know, adds his fairy dust to it. It's a beautiful thing. That, that scene in particular is one of the things I love about this series, is what they did is they just let long scenes evolve yeah. and simmer and never rush. It was just exquisite. It's brilliant stuff. Now, for the people out here, how many of you have seen Masters of the Air? Okay, good. So you know what we're talking about. Um, and I want to I wanna thank my panel, and this is, a, 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 you know, if you haven't seen it, it's just absolutely worth your time. It's wonderful. And I'm going to toss uh, the baton to Peter White. <laughs>